So I, I will get started. Um, my name is uh, Dennis Kai. I work for Alibaba. Today, I'm going to share with you some uh, experience uh, for our data center network evolution. Use uh, OpenSonic and uh, programmable hardware. So first of all, let's see what are the main drivers for our data center evolutions. Uh, I think some of you probably know Alibaba a bit, while many of you probably don't know much. So Alibaba is a web company, so we provide a lot of uh, web applications. There's lots of this. Uh, fundamentally, we can put this into five different uh, categories or business group. So the first one is uh, e-commerce. So you may see uh, Taobao or Tmall or AliExpress uh, outside of China. The second one is for the online payment and the mobile payment, use Alipay. For those of you who recently traveled to China or in the last couple of years, you probably have the feeling you don't need any cash or credit card. You can go anywhere in China use Alipay. Uh, the third one is our public cloud service. And the fourth one is for the logistic and shipment we call Cellular Network. Uh, in English, it means uh, Luby. We call ourselves uh, Luby, but uh, in fact, our platform carries about 70% of the total shipment in China. It's very incredible. And the, la the last one is for the entertainment. So we have the Yuku for the video. We have Alibaba picture for the movie and the music. So all these different applications are running on the same network infrastructure. So these applications have a, a very diverse and have different requirements for the network infrastructure. So that's the first driver for us for the evolution. The second one for the hyperscale. Our network is very, very large. A typical data center has tens of thousands of servers, and we have many, many of these. So we lease the data center, and we build our data center ourselves, and we publish 12 regions uh, of the network worldwide, but there are some of these we did not even not publish yet. So for each region, we have at least three availability zones. And for each availability zone, we have is a campus. We have multiple buildings, and each building will have a tens of thousands of servers. So you can imagine how big it is. And the third one, and even more important, we are growing really fast, especially with our public cloud service which increased three digits quarter of a quarter in the last three years. And this drive our infrastructure very crazy. So as you can see, we need evolution. So we have to balance a performance, a cost, feature velocity, and reliability to address the different diverse applications, hyperscale and the fast growing. But the, one important thing that is even more important is about the network operation. So our network operation team has tremendous pressure to operate this network. So that's the topic I'm going to talk for today. It's about the smart operation. There's no magic for the smart operation. It's about to get more data from your network and use your big data analysis system to analyze it and make your operation more sm uh, smarter. So that's the topic of, uh, for today. Now the question is, how you can get this data from your network? So today, with the traditional switch, is a, is a one of the specific software and hardware. And it can give you some information, but not too much. It can give you the information for the operational data above your switch. But there's a very little information about the user flow information. So let's be fair, you know, the switch vendors these days are evolving also very fast. So they provide much, much more data than before. But still, they cannot match up the speed of what we need. So inside, inside Alibaba, we have an open switch project. And this project is based on OpenSonic as a software. So we can fully control our software. We can make it much more efficient to talk with the switch. The second one is also important is for the hardware chip. Software alone is not enough. We also need the hardware. So we choose the latest hardware from the market, which has the programmability 
and the very advanced network telemetry features. So for example, they can provide a lot of information for the user flow, like uh, the latency, the path, and uh, the rate of the flow, and also have lots of other advanced uh, telemetry features, like uh, the buffer, snapshot, the packet drop, and the reasons. And uh, when the packet drop, they have the capture of the, of the packet and so on. There's lots of advanced telemetry information. I mean, our vision is for long term to, with this advanced network telemetry features, with all this data from the network, and with our in house built big data analysis systems, so we can make our network as a self driven as a long term. I think for the inbound network telemetry and all this advanced network telemetry, I mean, this is not something new. So the, the industry talk about this for quite a long time. And we see the POC from time to time. But as of now, um, personally, I don't see that people talk about the real use case, talk about real deployment experience. So I think we are probably one of the guys who eat the crap. So we are going to share with you some of our experience to use this advanced network telemetry and who took, how can it make our operation smarter. Um, I can just give you some specific examples, right? So the one example is about the, the silent packet drop. The silent packet drop means you know, packet got dropped with no reason. But for any packet drop, there is a reason. It just matter if you want to find out the reason, if you have a time to find out the reason. Um, back to many years ago, when I worked for Cisco Tech, we often log into the switch for the real-time real, real troubleshootings. But this time is gone. For the hyperscale data center, everything must be automatic. So you have all kinds of tools to identify this packet loss, then to see where the, where the loss is, then you isolate the switch from the network. So, I mean, the tools is written by the people. The tools could be smart, could be stupid. So with advanced network telemetry features, we just make our tools even smarter than before. So what we do here is, we use the inbound network telemetry to capture actually all the flows in our data centers. And uh, we know all the paths. And when any flow change SLA, change the path, change the latency, we actually have the notifications. We also have a different way to detect if there's any packet loss. So as soon as we see the packet loss, we have the five type of the flow, and then we immediately know actually where the particular flow is, and we can isolate the switch from that particular path. And all this happens very fast. This is particularly important for our new applications use RDMA based on a Rocky. So for some packet loss for the TCP, which is OK, but uh, when you run in the application, it's RDMA based on the PFC, and it will be a, it will be a headache. It will have a big performance decoration for your applications. So the faster you can find out the packet loss, and the better for your performance. So that's the, one of the main driver for this. So for the interest of time, so um, I'm just to share with you some of the things that we did for the Sonic. Okay. So we were announced to participate in the Sonic uh, last year in the ONS. And uh, we enabled the ODM. We expand ODM and ASIC to be part of the Sonic. And uh, we have a lot of uh, contributions in the Sonic. And especially in this afternoon, my colleague will talk about the specific contributions in more details. So you guys are welcome to attend that session. And uh, certainly, we are the lead uh, Sonic in China. So this slide is about our contribution to the Sonic, uh, which I'm not going to repeat. I think David just mentioned this as well. And uh, I mean, in addition to this uh, contribution to the open community, we also did a lot of development for the Sonic for our own use. Um, so I'm not going to go through the details so some of this, I think, are worth mentioning. So if you have interest in, you can join the afternoon session. The first one is about the server due homing. I think the server due homing, I think people probably all know this. So you have the VPC, uh, MC-LAC, a virtual switch, and some of the new 
idea is to run BGP on the server and so on. So we believe all these are not uh, too complex for us. So we invented a very lightweight multi-chassis solutions. So on the server side, it's still a bundle. So you don't need to change the echo systems on the server side. But on the switch side, the two switches are running independently to each other. They don't need to talk to each other. They don't need the link between each other. So we make it very simple. So that's the first thing we did. The second one, we, we did a lot of development for the RDMA, for the 25 gig and 100 gig, based on the Rocky version 2. And we have a, a lot of enhancement on the PGP. And the last, as, as I just mentioned, we develop a lot of features based on the inbound network telemetry. So what's our deployment at Alibaba? So all these features I just mentioned has been developed, and we finished the phase one, and have passed the qualification already. So we are about to put into real production in two to three months. And we have a massive deployment plan starting from later this year. Um, but I do want to bring two open issues to the, not open issues, to our, um, our experience to, the, to the, this community about this uh, inbound network telemetry. So the first one is about the interoperability between different vendors, different chip vendors, and even different standards. Um, you know, different chip vendors have different capability, they have a different proposal, and certainly they are not working with each other well today. So we hopefully, you know, we can all work together, partner with each other, each other and to make it work. The second one is really our experience. So when you deploy this with a large scale, you have a lot of data from your network. The problem is, can you handle this data? Do you have enough server to handle this data? And do you want to spend a lot of money to handle this data? I mean, certainly initially when we do this, I mean, it's not going to fly because we need like hundreds of servers. So it's not going to fly. So we have to do a, make a lot of change, work with the vendors to improve some features to, 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 uh, to, to reduce the server we need. And right now, it's more like economic, make, make, make economic sense right now. So that's, that's my talk. Thank you uh, for your attention. We've got time for one or two quick questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, so Dennis, um, um, the quick question around the, the operational challenge. Uh, you know, I, I can understand that once you move uh, to the Sonic-based uh, the data center deployment from traditional uh, vendor-based uh, uh, the network, so there, there is a specific uh, the challenge for you, the operational team uh, you faced. Uh, can you share a little bit about uh, the challenge in terms of the operation? Yeah, my, my talk is about operation, so <laughs> thanks to asking me this question. So um, to, be, to be honest, you know, we do see uh, some, some challenge ahead of us. So when we move from the traditional vendor switch to the white box, right? But on the other hand, you know, we also be very confident. And the reason is this. So today, when you look at our deployment, except the switch routers are vendor specific, everything else is in-house, like the network management systems, the, value, you know, the, the monitoring systems, the all kinds of automation, all kinds of tools. So all this software we made in-house. It's just a matter of that the piece of the hardware or equipment is not, okay? So I think in this uh, systems, you know, we have very good test emulation systems. So we can, before we put it into production, actually we have a regression test, all automated regression test, right? Uh, so when we change this to be um, white box, I think that's one big change for us probably, especially initially, we may need a lot of uh, much more frequent software upgrades. Since you know, we don't have that many resources like uh, the vendors. So we initially, when we develop particular features, the testing may not be that uh, you know, very, very, very complete as, uh, as a vendor did, right? 
So we may run into the issues, and we have to fix, and we have to image upgrade. I think that could be one of the biggest challenges for us. Uh, we have to change the operational model. But the good thing is, as I said, we have the full automation for the image upgrade, the rollback, and uh, actually after, after image upgrade, I, we have a system to validate if everything is working fine. If it's not, it will automatically roll back. So uh, since we have this system built build, build up already, I think you know, we, have, uh, we are very confident to, for this change. But it is a challenge for us. Yeah. Anybody else? Quick question. Again, we'll have the discussion after the next two speakers. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.